Hi, this video looks at exporting and um, I've come back now to look at these specific methods of entering international markets uh, which ties in with uh, this part down here, ways of entering international markets and the value of different methods. So these two points on the specification are linked and I'm going to go through each of these different ways of entering international markets. So um, the first way uh, that businesses can enter international markets is through exporting. And this, if you like, is like the least risky way of entering an international market. Um, because exporting occurs when the goods and services are produced in one uh, country and sold in another. So here's just a little infographic. It's a little bit old. It's 2014, I think, um, just showing uh, the countries that the UK sells its goods and services to. Um, and it might just be worth looking at these countries here uh, that make up the EU. A lot of our exports do go to the EU, which is uh, why Brexit um, is causing such concern, because that may cause some issues for businesses that export to the EU. Um, nevertheless, um, <coughs> exporting has pros and cons, and um, let's see if we can dive into what I mean by low risk. So, the benefits of exporting is that you don't need to set up operations overseas. What you're doing is you're making use of your existing um, facilities in your own country. Maybe you've got a factory and you decide that you're going to enter the US market or the Australian market or the French market. And um, so you increase production there. Uh, but you don't need to set up operations overseas. What you're doing is you're shipping off your product or you're somehow getting your product um, into those markets, but they're being produced in your own uh, existing premises, maybe in your home country. So this might be the first step that a business takes after it's been successful in its own market to um, expand into new markets and uh, start to grow in a global on a global scale. Um, it's going to increase the size of your target market, obviously operating, uh, selling your products overseas, increases the size of your geographical market. You're not just targeting your home country anymore, you're targeting um, a range of uh, people. And um, if you are exporting rather than going somewhere and actually setting up a factory there, uh, quality and uh, things can be closely controlled and monitored uh, by the management that are based in the home nation. Um, and as we are using our existing facilities more effectively, maybe we're increasing uh, capacity utilization, we should benefit from economies of scale, we can negotiate cheaper unit costs with our suppliers and so on and therefore our average cost should fall we become more efficient and it makes us more competitive uh, so these are the main pros of exporting however there are some cons of exporting um, if a business were to actually go into another country um, and set up production facilities there which would be a different way of um, entering an international market, you're likely to gain more in-depth knowledge of the local markets. You're going to have local employees probably, you'll certainly be closer to the target market, it's easier to communicate with them. So you may learn a bit more about the customers you're trying to sell to and therefore you'll be able to uh, specialise your products a little bit better. Um, if you are producing in your home country related to that, as your products may not necessarily be specialised for uh, the uh, market that you're selling to. Maybe you're specialising your product for your home customers who you know very well. Uh, we're producing our stuff there. Not necessarily, but it might mean that your products aren't specialised or as specialised as they could be. Um, and we're going to need to transport our products, uh, which is particularly problematic if we've, we've got a big hefty physical product because we're going to uh, incur transport costs and there may even be tariff barriers placed, uh, additional taxes to be paid when we sell our product overseas. So when is exporting most appropriate? Well, it's most appropriate when our goods and services are easily uh, transportable. Maybe they're electronic or digital or um, some kind of service that doesn't necessarily um, uh, require anything to be shipped like an insurance policy or, or um, legal services, for example. Um, 
or it's a small, easily transportable good. It's going to be less appropriate when it's something really heavy uh, that's going to, and bulky that's going to incur large transport costs. Um, exporting might be appropriate when the goods and services can be standardised across international markets. In other words, you don't need to um, alter the product in any particular way to make it appeal to the market in that question. You can just use your kind of standardised production process um, that uh, requires just one factory in your home market. And it's going to be uh, require reliable transport links, you know, preferably geographically close would help to minimise, minimise those transport links. Um, and finally, if an organisation's got production processes it wants to protect, other ways of internationalising include going into partnerships with other companies and entering those markets. But if you've got a production process that you really want to protect and keep secret, um, it might be the best idea to uh, produce that product in your existing facilities and export to the uh, market that you're aiming at.